All right then, so here we are today on the uh, on the next job. I'm going to be doing, um, taking all of these ridges off. They're basically hanging off anyway. And um, taking some off down there, started over here, removing all the mortar. And then um, I'm going to be fitting the uh, a dry ridge system. So instead of using mortar, um, I'm just going to be uh, basically doing the steps to fit the dry ridge and I'll go through that with you as the uh, day progresses. All right, so that, um, that came off fairly easily, actually. I mean, this mortar was pretty worn down. A lot of it's a bit like sand. On the ends, I've found um, it's... Uh, oh, that bit's pretty loose, actually. This bit was a bit more solid, but I was just going to show... Um, if you've got bits like this that are stuck to the tile solid, get a, you know, a screwdriver or something like this or a small tight bolster if it's going to fit in the profile of the tiles and um, knock it from this angle or this angle, you know, up here, there. You don't want to be hitting it into the roof tile itself because you're probably going to break the roof tile. So knock it so you're not, you know, so the power of the force is not actually going towards the roof tile. And then, um, and then you should be able to get these bits off pretty easily. Same with the tiles themselves. Sometimes you get bits stuck on them. Um, knock it in a direction that's away from the tile itself. And then uh, that way it's not going to, um, or you've got certainly got a lot less chance of breaking them. Um, I've knocked a, well, there's a couple, there's a little bit broken off that one up there. There's one that was actually totally shot up the other side that someone had just cemented in, in two pieces. Um, so yeah, occasionally you're gonna have to replace a couple, but mostly you're gonna get them out okay, these kind of tiles. Okay. Right then, so this is the uh, dry ridge box. It usually comes in a six meter kit. I think you can get a three meter kit as well, um, but usually it comes in six. So uh, let's see what we've got in here. Let's open this up. So we have uh, some instructions telling you what to do. Usually on the back, so if you've got any questions, you do have like a little uh, instruction kit in there. You've got the uh, units themselves that sit uh, between each ridge it's got a uh, roll of the felt that rolls out with um sticky back you peel this stuff off and it sticks to the uh six of the tiles you got some of these brackets that um so you can fix the button down the middle i'll show you that in a minute and then you've got a bag of goodies these are little plastic bits that um connect to your to this uh this this piece here and then you've got your stainless steel screws and some um some little nails and fixings and bits and bobs in there which i'll uh, get into a bit later okay let's get on the roof all right so here we are i'm about to fit the uh, metal bracket so i can get my buttons on there's me uh two by one buttons i was going to start on uh, on this end here and um, i mean i'm on this roof it's all scaffolded at a minute because some of the company has been here and has done all of this dry verge and the um the fascia and guttering and what have you and i'm just basically the chaps just called me to come and fit this but um anyway it's fit the uh they fit the dry verge and they've actually bedded mortar and then um and then put the dry verge over it which is uh, really weird i mean the whole point of a dry verge is you don't need uh you know your wet mortar in it so it looks like they've put the screws into the bloody mortar as well i mean god Anyway, I mean, I'm going to have to take this piece out in order to get my, because um, this needs to sort of strap over and fix to the rafter, which is below that. Um, God, okay. Anyway, um, what a bloody mess. Now, in the instruction manual, it's going to tell you to fit this underneath the battens um, because, uh, I mean, it's basically taking it from the approach that you're fitting it when constructing the roof originally. So, um, you know, obviously, so you're going to put these down before you put the last batten on. And um, I mean, in this case, we're retrofitting. Obviously, I've removed all the mortar and I'm now basically fitting the batten with these uh, metal straps. 
and all I do sometimes, I mean, you know, you can just basically, there's little holes in it to put the screw. So I put a screw through there, two screws in the center, pinning this, you know, in position, screw through there into the rafter, um, you know, and that's, and that's pretty solid. And just do that on every rafter as you go along. And, and um, you know, it's not technically exactly by the book and there's probably people who are gonna slate me for this, but um, you know, any roofer has, um, you know, I'm sure has done similar. I mean, it's not in any way gonna lessen the integrity and strength of the system that's being fitted. It's just more of a retrofit than um, installing it from scratch. Okay, so um, there you go, we'll carry on. So one other point on this um, retrofitting these, um, when you're doing it over the batten like this, um, use screws and not, when in the kit, it comes with uh, nails to fix these in place, like little clout nails. Um, scrap those, use them for something else. On this, screw them in. So I'm using like uh, 40 by four screws uh, going all around and uh, fixing it solidly in place. And that, that, that's like totally solid, not going anywhere. Now, obviously, just want to add, this is being fitted directly over a rafter. There is a rafter right here. You've got the felt sags down slightly, rafter solid there. So that screw is going through this button into the, um, into the rafter below. And uh, there's a screw here as well, which is kind of pinching, pinching it either side into the top of the, uh, the rafter there. And then um, if you're doing the retrofit this way, uh, make sure that this piece here goes straight down the batten because you are going to have um, an issue if if not with these uh, with the nibs on the tiles with these that hook over the top of the batten um, might get in the way. So you need to kind of flatten that down, you know, so the tile's going to sit right. And um, so I've got a few in place there already. And um, carry on doing it again. There's probably going to be people commenting on here and slating me for doing it this way like oh it needs to be under the button and blah blah and yes you can remove the button take the nails out and fit it underneath but to be honest i mean in retrofitting there's not a massive amount of value in that it's just going to just going to take you an extra couple of hours to do the job basically and um, this thing's solid it's not going anywhere okay right i've almost um I'm getting towards the end of this uh, first length of batten. You can see here there's a nail there that indicates where the rafter is. So what you want to do is I'm going to cut the, um, the batten here so that when I connect my next length of batten to get to the end, um, the join is going to be on a batten rather than having a, you know, a piece of batten just floating between the, uh, between the, the rafters. And that way it's just going to be a bit more solid. Okay then, so I've got all the batten fixed down now. I've got these um, little metal straps on, uh, on each rafter. Make sure you put them on every rafter. And it fits quite nicely between the uh, tiles, as you can see. So that's gonna be the, uh, you know, a solid fixing point for, um, for the ridges when we screw them on shortly. All right, so next thing to do is to make sure you know, you've got all the dust and what have you from the old mortar, so sweep all of that down, make sure it's nice and clean, and then we're going to uh, roll out the felt, which is going to stick down onto the tiles. All right, so this is how the uh, tile is going to sit with the um, dry ridge fixing in place. Um, and as you can see, the batten sits a fair amount lower down, and I've only got probably maybe 10, 15 mil of screw that's gonna go into the timber. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add another batten. I mean, sometimes you do need to uh, double up the battens and it is uh, recommended actually per the instructions. Um, if you can get the batten sitting high enough so that the, you know you get enough of the screw going in, you will get in a, a, away with one to be fair. But in this situation, I'm gonna add another batten on top um, just so we get, you know, a decent, a decent fixing um, into the button there. Okay.
All right, so we've got the, uh, the felt rolled out now. So what we're going to do next is um, pull the uh, plastic film off. So this just peels off all the way down, exposes like a sticky back plastic bit. And this just needs to be molded into the, uh, into the detail of the tile. So you've just got to basically go along and um, you know put some pressure on it make sure that tacky bit basically sticks to the tiles and we'll do that all the way down on both sides right so now what we're going to do is we're going to get these um these pieces which go between the uh, ridges and uh, we're going to fit these little plastic things that come with the uh, ridge kit. The one with the hole in it is uh, the one the screw is going to go in, that goes in the centre and uh, and the other ones go on either side and we're just going to push those in um, right down. And uh, here we have job done. So that's all the uh, the tiles down. Um, had to make a, uh, a cut here so it fitted. Have a full tile on the end with a screw and a little lead washer, as I did before. Put the cut one in from the end, and because um, you're never going to have exactly the same amount of uh, tiles, going to be very unlikely. Um, you know, because the join between here obviously would have to be identical to the uh, to the mortared tiles so you're usually going to end up with uh, probably needing a little bit more or a little bit less or we'll make a cut that's slightly different and um, anyway so uh, so there you go jobs are good in <laughs>